Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well, I've got another job for you today. Now, when people think of BMW cooling systems, they always say they're awful. They're always going wrong. Cars always overheat all the time. But the original specification of the BMW cooling system, even when used with, on, the, uh, on the V8 and the V12s, it was over-specified. And in fact, you can put your foot flat on the throttle on the V8s and V12s and the cooling system won't even break a sweat. It's got enough dissipation capacity to keep the coolant at the correct temperature, even under harsh conditions. Now, I know you're all gonna say, oh, Tim, the thing's always going wrong. Well, there's reasons for that. Obviously, the, the cooling systems on these cars, I mean, my E31 is 21 years old, and the, I had the same age cars when I had the E32 and the E38 and all the rest of them. Yeah, bits do wear out, so the plastic parts tend to fail, so the neck that connects to the radiator, the top hose, that tends to snap off and you think, we well, just pulled off. But actually, if you have a look inside, the neck of the radiator is still in there. And then the auxiliary water pump, its unions often snap off, and that's due to the age of the uh, plastic, I'm afraid, and you get pipes explode at the back of the engine. Um, the ones which run from the heater valves to the accumulator at the back of the V8 and the V12s. And that's because everything jiggles around, the engine's moving in respect to the heater valves and the heater matrix, and they eventually fail as well. But that's to ex be expected on an old car. And on the E31, I've changed all the hoses on it, and so I'll be okay again for another 20 years or so. But one thing that can stop the BMW cooling system working correctly is what we're going to have a look at today. Now, the first time I saw this, my friend who's got a 750i, he was miles away in France and he started overheating at idle. And uh, so he thought, well, I mean, the normal problem is the viscous coupled uh, fan. So he managed to get hold of a viscous, viscous coupled fan in France and he changed it and it didn't make the slightest bit of difference. And we, we discussed it while he was over there, and it, it did look just like a viscous coupled fan. But he had exactly the same problem I had on my E31 when I started to have things explode and drop off. Now, the things that both of these cars shared was the fact we'd never had the radiators out on either car, and everything looked fine. Um, but when I did the condenser on the E31, and I pulled everything apart, had the covers off. And when I pulled the condenser out, I just could not believe the amount of debris on there. It was full of leaves and it even had a little dormouse nest in, in there. And the problem is, of course, is that stops air flowing through all the radiators. And because the viscous coupled fan is uh, switched on and off by the uh, temperature of the air coming through the radiators, it affects its bimetallic switch and either switches it on or off it didn't get any air, so it wasn't actually switching the viscous coupled fan on. And uh, so in my friend's case, change the viscous coupled fan didn't make the slightest bit of difference. And it wasn't until we looked at it that uh, found there was all sorts of leaves and stuff in there. And that stops the BMW cooling systems working properly dead. I mean, it, if you don't get any air through the radiators, it's really not going to work. And I was quite surprised that the E31 kept going quite so well with so much debris between the radiators, and there really was quite a lot. So today we're going to take the uh, housings off of the radiator assembly, and we're going to have a look in between the radiators. Also, there's four of them on an E31. You've got the engine oil cooler, you've got the condenser, you've got the gearbox oil cooler and the main coolant radiator, and E32s and E38s uh, quite often have three because they have the transmission cooler inside the main radiator, so that loses one of them. And I know some models don't have an engine oil cooler either, the lower power models. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna take the covers off, and I'll show you exactly how to get the covers off on the E31 without snapping anything. Have a look in there. Now, if we've got any debris, I'm not taking the condenser out again. So we can hoover it out and uh, you can use sort of sticks and things to get the leaves out. And then usually when I've got all the leaves out, I then blast through the radiator with um, a hose. So I can force water from the back of the radiator forward through to the nose of the car. 
and we'll push all the debris out from between the radiators. Now, of course, we've got the auxiliary fan there, and uh, but that's a 12 volt system and it doesn't really mind fresh water um, as soon dries off and it doesn't do any harm at all or to the resistors around the uh, uh, auxiliary fan either. So anyway, we're going to go through how to take the covers off, um, go have a look, uh, decide whether we need to hoover it out and then we'll go through how to put the covers on. Now this routine works for all the models, the 31, 32, 38, 39, even for the later cars like the E64, although it doesn't have a viscous coupled fan, has electric fan, it still has a number of radiators. And I even did this job on my wife's Mini a little while ago because the air conditioning wasn't working very well, even though the system had enough gas in it, and that was due to just blockage. It actually in between the fins of the condenser and once that's cleared out it was absolutely perfect after that. Right well enough talking let's get on with it. Right uh, I'll show you how to get this cover off it's a bit fiddly especially putting it back on uh, because they do uh, large bits of plastic and they do sort of warp and stuff but uh, anyway these are quarter turn fixings so you just turn quarter turn anti-clockwise all six of them and then it's also held on to the cowling by three clips. And for that, you need a little flat bladed screwdriver to poke in. Uh, so there's the points, one, two, and three, showed with an arrow on the cover. And so you just stick your screwdriver in there between the cowling and the cover, give it a quick tweak, and off it'll come. And just make sure that each of the quarter turn fixings aren't holding on to the cowling. And there you can see the oval holes and how they sort of go in and out on them. Right, let's have a look in there, see what we got. Well, that doesn't look too bad at all, the old cooler. That's fine. Anything behind it? No. It's old, but it's okay. No leaves or anything. A couple of leaves right in the centre of the aux fan, but the aux fan's fine. I don't need to scrub any of that out. The usual place for all the debris to sort of build up is between the condenser and the main radiator. So let's have a look down there. Get the camera down there if we can. Ooh, there we go. Look at that. Nothing in there. That's not bad at all. That's, I suppose that's a couple of years since I changed the condenser. Put a new content, uh, condenser in, this bare one here. And a new auxiliary fan, did it in two goes actually. And so I yeah, cleaned out all the leaves there and uh, I'll put up a picture of what it looked like. And you can imagine that uh, the cooling wasn't that efficient with that much muck in there. But now a couple of years later, we're not looking bad at all. Probably done 12,000 miles since I've done this, I should think, something around there. So yeah, that's good. So this is the area that you need to clear out. Get that cover off. Um, have a look at the oil cooler. Both sides of it. Make sure there's nothing in there. Don't forget they're quite uh, delicate devices. Uh, you won't pop them, but you can damage the fins on them. And of course, the more you bend over fins, the less air goes through them. But this is fine. It looks fine. Let's have a look through the stuff itself. You can see one bent flange there. Zoom. No, difficult to focus in on that. You can actually see through the condenser. I can see the light shining through onto the main radiator so that's clear. And the main radiator is fine. Haven't changed that. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if that's an original one. The rest of it has been when I've taken stuff apart so good. Um, that's okay, but uh, that's the area just in there that usually gets blocked up and behind the fan. And you use a hose to blow it out. Uh, we'll try and void the connectors on the auxiliary fan and the auxiliary fan itself. But it's only a 12 volt system and it doesn't mind a bit of fresh water being chucked at it. So yeah, attack it from both sides. Attack it from the, uh, or, uh, the viscous coupled fan side squirt water through in that direction and also squirt water through in, from the front as well through the oil cooler through the condenser and through to the main radiator and you get quite a lot out 
because um, it doesn't like to pop out the bottom too much but you can go under and you can look up there you can get the leaves from the bottom as well I don't look too bad up there at all actually I'm quite happy with that that's obviously where the uh, condenser was changed yeah so the original pipe works a bit rusty but the the new pipe works okay they don't look too bad at all so yeah I'm quite happy with that but it's certainly worth looking underneath the car through the CSI scoop and checking because that's where most of the stuff comes in don't get much through the grills all comes in through this great big great hole in it so yeah that's a good thing and also check through the fins yeah don't look too bad at all that looks good yeah everything's looking fine there don't need to clean that out at all and by the way these are chrome grills and I didn't put them on they were an optional extra when you bought a car in the UK in the late 19 in late 1998 and 99 you had to have any option you liked uh, for no extra money well getting it off isn't too bad getting it on's a bit harder uh, because the the side moldings sort of slightly warped in respect to the rest of it so get it into position make sure each of those things are in their hole and then press the, the arrows and if you don't make sure they're in the holes, they go flying out and you lose them. So the top ones aren't too bad to do usually. Quarter of a turn, they're in. And it's the same with the bottom ones. They align with the side cowlings much better. Uh, so yeah, quarter turn, so the, the marks on it go left and right rather than up and down. And for the middle two, you need to sort of lever things a bit with a small screwdriver and then do them up. There we go, so that's it's a bit out of place there. Let's push that down, that's much better, and that's it. That's it, lovely. Cover back in place. Right, there we go then. Well, uh, that's the covers all back on again. Wasn't much debris to be found in that. And I'm quite surprised, to be honest, but I mean, the E31's got a huge, great big scoop on the front of it with the CSI nose on them. You would have thought all sorts would go up there, but no, it's quite little. And so it must have meant that that debris was built up over the 20, 21 years or whatever it was before I actually had to change the condenser because the rest of the radiators are actually same as they were when it was brand new they hadn't moved at all so it's still got the original uh, radiators apart from con condenser now so obviously it takes a while to build up but once it's built up it's going to stop things working and the viscous coupled fan will be one of them and the air conditioning is another one if you've got weak air conditioning then it's certainly worth checking for leaves between things righty ho well that's about it for today uh, thanks very much for watching thanks for subscribing and thanks for everything and I'll speak to you soon.